In our last video, we discussed about a piano's axioms. And in this video, we will talk about some uh, intuitive uh, relevance of uh, these axioms. And but before I delve into the meat of this uh, uh, of this discussion, let me tell you what I mean by mathematical proof, because uh, mathematical proof is going to be the instrument with which uh, we are going to learn and we are going to build these uh, numbers. So mathematical mathematical proof is nothing but uh, clear logical thinking. Uh, and um, I think uh, one saying of one of the greatest mathematician of last century, David Hilbert, uh, his saying does justice to this. Uh, so in his words, a mathematical theory is not to be considered complete until you have made it so clear that you can explain it to the first man whom you meet on the street. It means the logical theory is so uh, direct, uh, so discrete logically, and it has no prerequisites uh, in such a way that you can explain it to the first man whom you meet on the street. And with these uh, videos, this is what my uh, motive is. So first, let us uh, revisit axioms again. So axiom one was that uh, one is a natural number. And axiom two states that for each x, for each natural number, there exists a unique, uh, a unique one natural uh, number, uh, which is called x successor of x. So we call it x prime. Axiom three states that one is no number successor; it is the primary number. Uh, we we call it army cell of numbers. Axiom 4 states that uh, if two successors of two separate numbers are equal to each other, it means that those numbers are very equal to begin with. And axiom 5 then is uh, uh, the axiom of uh, induction. Now let's see how these uh, axioms are intuitively relevant. And in order to demonstrate that, let's assume that we have some pebbles and uh, we want to count them, we want to enumerate them. These are our pebbles. But what do I mean by enumerating them? By enumerating, I mean we need a system through which we can put uh, these pebbles uh, in one-to-one -one correspondence with. So this is what I mean by one-to-one uh, -one correspondence, so that you can associate each pebble with a number. Now let's see how our axioms can uh, help us in development of such a number system. Our axiom 1 states that 1 is a natural number. It means that we have one such a number which can help us enumerate these pebbles. So we can write this number as this. Uh, so 1 is a number and uh, it can help us in enumeration of the first pebble. It can help us in accounting of the first pebble. But what about the other pebbles? Our axiom 2 states that each number has a unique uh, successor. We can use this successor to uh, enumerate other pebbles as well. But there are some logical inconsistencies with uh, these axioms and uh, hence we will need other axioms as well. Let's say for example, let's assume that we have started counting from another number, call it y. The whole system will break because we will still have confusion whether to associate the next pebble with uh, the successor of y or with successor of x. How can we erase this unwanted property? We can do this by introducing axiom 3. Axiom 3 simply stated that uh, 1 is no number successor. It means 1 is the primary number. So this erases this unwanted property of natural numbers. Now we have that we have there is only one beginning and 1 is such a number which is no number successor. There could be other problems, other logical errors that may uh, make uh, enumeration impossible. One such example is uh, uh, a circular system. Uh, let's uh, see an example of it. Would it be logically possible for uh, such a system to exist if we only relied on these three axioms. Uh, well, it is quite possible in, uh, this system, this circular system, when a successor of the successor of number uh, moves back to the other numbers. Uh, this will not violate any of these axioms. So for this, we need a, a fourth axiom. And what did our fourth axiom tell us? Uh, if x prime is equal to y prime, then x is equal to y. It means that if two successors of two numbers are equal to each other, it means those numbers were equal to each other to begin with. But this is not the whole story. We need another statement for uh, this circular system to not exist. And uh, what is this statement? So this is the statement that we need. If we have these two conditions fulfilled, we'll be sure uh, 
uh, to say that uh, our exam uh, our number system that we have developed so far uh, will not be circular and would be and it will be linear just like we want it to be so that enumeration will become possible uh, so in our next video we will discuss uh, how can we prove it and we will use a technique called proof by contradiction and this will be our first theorem that we'll be proving so far we are only stating axioms this will be our uh, first theorem that we will be that we will be proving